All right, we're at this point, second and third gear, three, four hub, and then one, two sleeve, and then this is also for reverse gear also. So I wanted to mention part of rebuilding a transmission is the inspection portion and then also there's some detail work that may not always get done during a rebuild and I think that's what separates a transmission that's just been assembled versus one that's actually been rebuilt. So if we take a look at the 2-1 hub and sleeve these teeth are also for reverse and typical of an older Toyota transmission reverse is not synchronized so that's why the manual always says make sure you're at a complete stop before you engage reverse otherwise you know the transmission still spinning and unsynchronized gears are literally gonna clash against each other so any of these older non synchronized transmissions I always recommend first and then reverse just that helps slow down the transmission. It also helps you remember like cars gotta be at complete stop before I go into reverse. So why am I talking about all this? If you notice, it might be hard to see on the camera, but these teeth for reverse gear are in okay shape. They do have some amount of wear. These are supposed to be at a, like a perfect triangle or point, but this is just from how many years of, you know, non-synchronized, the gears will have some clash against each other. In many older transmissions, these are almost impossible to get. This thing is actually in okay shape and I'm going to reuse this, but before I reuse this, I'm gonna clean this up and what do I mean by that? So on the top right here, you can feel there's burrs. So I'm gonna knock these burrs off. Sometimes, depending on the condition, I'll actually reshape each individual tooth to be sharper. When I take off this sleeve and clean it and uh, put it through the parts washer, I'll get a better idea of what my game plan is going to be, but for sure, I'm going to take the grinder and, and uh, knock off the burrs off of the top of each tooth. Because again, through normal use, these burrs are going to come off anyway, and you don't want this stuff ending up circulating in the gear oil. All right, so the piece de resistance, pressing off second gear and one, two hub. If you notice in the service manual, they want you to put the separator under second gear. I do not recommend doing that. Do not do this. So the last time I built a R154, here's what happened. I did, ex I put the bearing splitter right here under the teeth of second gear to press this entire assembly off, hopefully. It ended up taking so much force that I started getting t chips on some of these teeth. So we are not going to press this entire assembly off. I'm going to press the one, two hub off first and then I need to double check. This might just be on some needle roller bearings, but or not. So, and then I'll press second gear off separately. And what I'm trying to do pressing this off in pieces is that it'll take a lot less force to press these off individually rather than both of these together. So how am I gonna do that? I will set up the bearing splitter and then we'll come back and we'll take a look. All right, so we have our one, two hub set up. You can see this, I have the curved side actually under that synchronizer in between the gear cone and then the hub. So the jaws are under the synchronizer. So what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna sacrifice that synchronizer to press up on the one, two hub. And if you see the diameter of this guy and it's toothed in the middle, I think this is what takes a lot of force to actually press off. So I have some PB blaster soaking in there. While I press this off, I'm also gonna heat up the center of this guy to make it easier to press off as well. We have our assemblies pressed off. Here's the one, two hub again. You can see we sacrificed the synchro to press this guy off, but far better option than damaging the gear. We're going to getting ready to press off the second gear and hub assembly. This is the way to do it. Press off the hub first. You guys can also see all that grit inside the gear cone. Why it's important to thoroughly clean up a transmission before a rebuild. Cause if you can imagine if I just put this guy together again dirty, all this stuff circulates through your fresh rebuild. Starting assembly on this R154, or I should say assembly and deep cleaning. So my input is assembled, brand new bearing. If you guys follow the channel, you know the importance of using the correct shielded bearing if it came like that from OEM. 
US made synchros, each synchronizer, I'll actually inspect these by hand. Sometimes you might get casting flash or burrs that I'll knock off with a deburr tool. I make sure to go through every one of these because you don't know, sometimes these get ovalized. I've seen like deep gouges from shipping damage. So yeah, important to go through every single one of these. So a common place where there's burrs and casting flash are these synchro oil channels. So if I see that, I'll actually hand deburr each individual oil channel in this synchro. Another part of rebuilding a transmission versus just assembly is actually not a good way to describe it, but the fine detail work. So if you look at this counter shaft, you can look closely. The faces of the gears are deburred. Typically there'll be some extra casting flash on the face of this tooth. The danger of that is that this casting flash acts like a little ridge where there's a chance where it could break off and cause more damage to the tooth. It's also unnecessary weight on the gear train. So all this casting flash is deburred off. While I'm doing this, this is a good opportunity to like triple check that each gear tooth is in good shape. So you can see on the entire counter shaft on both faces, I deburred the entire gear set. Pretty interesting, I just discovered right now too that this counter shaft is actually hollow inside right here. Again, deburring the gear set. Before I press this bearing on, the face of this guy got deburred. I inspected each one of these dog teeth, make sure they're in good shape. Sometimes there'll be some like a normal amount of like extra material up top from the uh, engagement teeth sliding on and off from the slider and then these dog teeth and you'll have burrs accumulate up here. This is in pretty good shape. This is actually in really good shape, but uh, in some older gear sets or gear sets with more wear, this burr would be a lot more and I'd actually take the Dremel and knock off these burrs as well. So the synchro gear cone will get the fourth gear synchro. There's actually a spec for the gear cone height. So if you put a feeler gauge in between here, there should be a spec too close and then this synchro will not be able to do its job and slow down the gear. And that'll also tell you either your synchronizer is bad or worn or I've had in one case the actual gear cone on the gear itself was worn so that input shaft ended up being garbage. Another part of building a manual trans synchro gear cone I will hand polish up to 1500 grit. I'm not going to show you guys in this video but what this does it, it, is it cleans off the old material and then it preps a new surface for the synchro to go on. It's pretty similar to like honing out the bores of an engine. Yeah, you can see more deburr work inside this guy. Probably in the manufacturing process, there was like a lip right here that I just deburred off. Because again, this is all extra weight, extra material, and then could be a potential disaster, right? One of these burrs breaks off and then goes into the pocket needle bearing. Who knows? All right, so we have our third gear assembly, three, four hub and slider cleaned, all the keys, bearings cleaned. Got a new ultrasonic, I'll show you guys in a second. So one key thing different or interesting or good about this particular transmission is actually third gear has a needle roller bearing or I should say a caged roller bearing, where a lot of times there'll be oil channels cut directly on the shaft and then third gear will ride directly on the shaft. So the reason for these bearings is actually for, so this gear can spin easier and there's less, less friction inside. And if you can imagine that if that gear can spin easier, that means the synchro has an easier job stopping the gear when we're making that shift. Um, it's even to the point I know other transmissions, there's actually kits to convert this to take a bearing. So I did a little bit of deburr and chamfer work to third gear. You can see knocking off the hard edges off of these oiling channels. The dog teeth has some wear on top like we talked about earlier. So these just, just using the Dremel just kiss the top of these things to take the burrs off. And also same thing, knocked off the casting flash on the gear teeth. And then also with these oiling channels, just radius the edge of these guys for better oil flow.
third, second, one, two, hub and slider. Also, this is the reverse slider. We are getting ready to put on first gear. Just a good example of how strong a R154 is. There's my hand and then there's first gear. So you can clearly see the size comparison. I have the first gear parts laid out. So plastic washer, cage needle bearings, synchro goes on the cone of first gear. And then we will actually be replacing this thrust washer plus the dowel pin with a billet Marlin crawler unit. So here's what the new one looks like. Um, a lot of people have had success with these. Apparently at certain power levels, this thrust washer will actually shatter I was a little bit worried because you can see there's oil channels manufactured into here, but I guess that's also where this thing breaks. A lot of people have been running big power using the Marlin crawler upgrades like this. So I actually have a 2JZ Cressetta customer with another R154 rebuilt by myself. And then he's running big power also with all the Marlin crawler goodies. These, these have held up for him so far. All right, sorry guys, I was actually gonna film the process of putting the shafts into the center plate, but I ended up running into an issue because this is the second time I've done this where actually I put the shafts in backwards, so this way. Yeah, just for photo reference, these holes facing towards you and then the input shaft should be facing this way. Here's where we're at, the billet center plate should go on pretty soon and then we'll continue assembling the transmission here's the marlin crawler rear bearing retainer as compared to the oem one you can see the thickness difference between these two guys new hardware we'll put some blue loctite 13 foot pounds is the factory spec if i remember correctly these things fail too the oem ones at certain power levels take a look at the back of these guys yeah i'll install this right now 